Okay, my name's Michael Handlin. I'm a principal investigator at the Wellman Center for Photomedicine in Mass General Hospital and also an associate professor in the Department of Dermatology at Harvard Medical School. Um, as you can probably hear, I'm not a native of, native of the US. I came from England as I trained as an organic chemist. And I came to Boston about uh, 15 years ago and stayed ever since. So my, my main interests are in phototherapy, the use of light basically to cure disease. Two basic routes that this can be done, one is to combine the light with photosensitizing dyes in what we call photodynamic therapy, and the other is to use the light alone. So photodynamic therapy or PDT will usually kill things, but using the light alone in so-called low-level laser therapy or photobiomodulation will tend to stimulate things. So the, the low-level laser therapy, or LLLT as we call it, is used to stimulate wound healing, to healing of fra bone fractures or tendon ruptures or cartilage. It's even used for more serious injuries such as spinal cord injuries and traumatic brain injuries and heart attacks and strokes reduces inflammation, relieves pain. So the reason people call it low level is that in general low levels tend to work better than high levels which is the whole concept of the biphasic dose response or hormesis that we've been discussing at this conference. So in general a few joules per square centimeter of red or near infrared light will be beneficial but a large dose, such as 50, 100 joules per square centimetre, will be detrimental. At least the good effect will go away and they may be detrimental effects. So this has been shown in, in many, many papers. And uh, one of my research interests is to try and figure out why this is. So this involves dissecting the molecular and cellular mechanisms in which the photons are absorbed by the mitochondria they stimulate more ATP production, low levels of reactive oxygen species, and activate transcription factors such as NF-kappa B, which is a very pleiotropic transcription factor, and cause the translation of many, many gene products that do all the beneficial things of low-level light. So what could be produced at low levels of the light that's good and produced at high levels that are bad. So reactive oxygen species are a good candidate for this. They're well known to stimulate cellular processes at low levels, but to inhibit them at high levels. Nitric oxide is also involved in the, in the cellular mechanisms. It's displaced from various mitochondrial proteins that are inhibited by nitric oxide. And it's possible that the nitric oxide released by the light at low levels does a whole lot of beneficial things, and at high levels does damaging things. Uh, the third possibility is, is that of transcription factors. I, I mentioned that NF-kappa B is a protective transcription factor that's anti-apoptosis and generally pro-cell survival. And that we've shown that that's activated at low levels of light, and it's entirely possible that different transcription factors which are damaging, which are pro-apoptotic, could be activated at higher levels. So I, I believe that the whole level of the whole subject of low-level light will become increasingly popular as, as advances are made in understanding the basic mechanisms. It could be applied to serious diseases as well as the, the more minor um, sort of aches and scrapes and things it's used for now. But whatever happens in the low-level light field, I believe that this whole concept of the biphasic dose response, whereby a little bit of light is good for you and a lot of light is bad for you, will remain. 